from last year with Michigan in town as we welcome you to women's basketball here on BTN. Jason Horowitz, Maryland Hall of Famer, Christy Winter. Scott, happy to have you with us at the Xfinity Center. And there are a ton of fantastic freshmen in this ballgame. Nas Hillman leads the conference field goal percentage shooting. Amy Dilk along the way as well. She has been sensational in the starting lineup. And then for Maryland, five games ago, Shakira Austin entered the starting lineup at size and maybe the best shooter in the conference. Freshman Taylor Mike Sell leading the conference in three-point makes. Starting lineups for the Terps and the Wolverines. Couple of stars, certainly. Hallie Thome for Michigan up front. Kyla Charles, but again, the freshman, a big part of the story for both these teams. Well, definitely. You're looking at Maryland. Shakira Austin leads all Big Ten freshmen in rebounding with 11 a game. So she does her work early and often on the interior. And Taylor Mike Sell, you were talking about her shooting prowess. One of the best shooters, like you said, in the Big Ten Conference. 500 career wins for Brenda Fries. 20th year as a head coach overall. 17 here at Maryland. And we're underway. Seventh all-time meeting in the series. Michigan won last year in Ann Arbor. Senior day, 71-65. Terps had won the previous five. Right away to Stephanie Jones. And inside, it's knocked away by Haley Brown. And she's starting to have a bigger impact. Yeah, Michigan started out in man-to-man -man defense. And yes, Maryland is long in many positions. But so is Michigan on the inside. When you're talking about 6'5", Hallie Thome. Hallie Thome still leads the team in scoring nearly 13 a game. That's down from the last couple of years. But once Big Ten play got going, she's gotten going. Yeah, earlier this year she had some issues with her back, but she's worked through that and has played strong for her team. She's going to make a matchup though. Shakira Austin, the six foot five freshman from Fredericksburg, Virginia, with the answer. Deja Church has it blocked, but right into the hands of Thome. And Austin to the floor. And a jump ball will favor the Wolverines and a quick start to this ball game. A quick start to the game, but also a quick hustle to the floor to get the 50-50 basketball opportunity by the 6-5 players. I love that. Usually you see the guards scrapping on the ground. I love to see the centers on the floor trying to get that basketball for their team. Amy Dilk to the bucket. Right underneath the rim, caught caught. I'm pretty sure you were telling Brenda Freeze earlier today, though, that if you would have rather have been a three, so you didn't have to get the bumps and bruises <laughs> from the floor. Absolutely. Well, it wasn't from the floor. It was from the stronger, bigger players <laughs> on the block. But watch as this ball comes off a 50-50 opportunity. Who's going to get the ball? Shakira Austin, the freshman, on the ground, the senior. Allie Thome getting on the ground as well. And you just have to respect the hustle. That's a, a long way down. Now the stoppage, <laughs> the shot clock hadn't restarted. Now they've reset. So... Under 20 seconds on the shot clock. Church, nice bounce pass. Thome blocked from behind, Shakira Austin. Oh, great timing by the freshman, Shakira Austin, with the block. Kyla Charles, the dump down, and Stephanie Jones finishes at the rim, an early 4-2 advantage. Well, that's where Maryland's defense turns into quick offense. Another steal for the Terps. Turnover's been a big problem, really, for both these teams this year, and that's the perfect example, Christy. Both Maryland and Michigan in that 16-17 turnover range this season. Well, defense turns to offense. Shakira Austin with the bump of the basketball from behind and Kyla Charles inside to Stephanie Jones for the reverse and finish for Maryland. Wolverines Tuesday night, an overtime win over Northwestern, an important one. Their second straight one-point game. They lost a point by a point to Purdue. Allie Thome. And the defensive collection as she touches the ball in the paint is going to be a problem. Well, they know that she is left-hand dominant. She's a left-hander, so they're trying to take away that left hand and that soft baby hook that she likes to go to. They crowded her space on that one. Austin, the soft touch from the elbow. And she's going to continue to get better and better because she puts the work in, and that soft touch is really going to come in handy. That's a three. They need Nicole Munger to hit shots in this ball game if the Wolverines are going to keep pace with the Terps. Well, they do. Michigan 2-2 two and two in conference play right now as Blair Watson loses control in the paint. The freshman Dilk on the push. Munger finds herself open. And again, too strong. One and done for the Wolverines, who have been so good on the offensive glass this year, but yet to get that part going. Well, Munger's a 40% shooter from 3-0 for 2 to start today, but... 
She's not going to stop shooting that basketball. She understands that the work that she's put in is going to pay dividends if she keeps trying to get that shot off in it. Stephanie Jones again off the glass. Maryland with an 8-2 advantage. That's eight straight for the Terps. Church back the other way. No offensive board from Thom. A lot of contact. No foul. Now Charles right there. Two high hands to deflect a piece of Thom's shot. Mike sell the floater, but an offensive foul. Now there was less contact on the charge than there was on the no call. Yeah, Taylor Mike Sell is coming down the paint, trying to get that floater off. But good job there by Nicole Munger to stop in her tracks. Prior to the gather, although it was a, probably a tenth of a second ahead of the gather. And Mike to Sell to the bench with her first foul, Shanice Lewis who started the first 10, a starter last year, point guard now into the game, and she plays starter minutes. Yeah, she plays starters minutes, and she says she just wants to win, so it doesn't matter if she's starting or if she's coming off the bench, she just wants to impact her team and get more than five assists a game is what she told us at practice And Christy, today. there's the left hand again for yep. Thome. You said she's gonna go to that side, and she did. She's got the four for the Wolverines. Yeah, that time, no crowd in her way. <laughs> got that shot off. With the better rebounding teams, in fact, the two best rebounding teams in the conference, Amy Dilk to the glass. Offensive board for Haley Brown, and she can't put it in. Yeah, Maryland is fifth in the country in rebounding margin. Michigan is tenth in the country. Nice spin, Kyla Charles. First team, all Big Ten, leading the Terps in nearly 18 a game. And Dunger to the bucket, and that's good for them to go. Christy, Michigan had started two of ten from the floor before that layup. Well, pushing the pace, they want to get up and down the floor a little bit. And Maryland right there, they weren't established in their defensive transition. You've got to protect the paint first and then fan out to the perimeter area. Jones the deep jumper. Thome the rebound and she's fouled. Shanice Lewis whistled for her first. Here, right here, Kyla Charles with the crossover and the spin off the glass. A Wade watch list player this season. It's a team in scoring, and she is such a utility player. She can play multiple players defensively, and that's the beauty of her game. She's not locked in, boxed in to one particular position. And she has really done a tremendous job of being a leader this season for Brenda Fries and Maryland. Oz Hillman into the game for the first time for the Wolverines. She gets the assist. Haley Brown the three. And the Wolverines call back within one. A 1-2-2 one, two, two look full court press there as Blair Watson loses the handle. Church into the front court, dumps down for Dilk. Swatted away by Austin, her second block of the opening quarter. Well, freshman on freshman right there, but you have to understand that Shakira Austin is 6'5". And she's long and lanky. You can't just put up any old lollipop shot in there. She's going to swing at that and take it away. And I understand that sitting next to someone who's 6'4". <laughs> well, blocks, I think, uh, those are my favorite things. I didn't get as many as she gets, but wow. Munger knocked that out of bounds with nine on the shot clock. 4.29 to go in the opening quarter. Up and down, Maryland up by one. Trying to get win number 501 for Brenda Fries. A milestone for the ages for her in her 17th season here at Maryland. But she wants her team to be consistent with what she wants them to do, and that's rebound, run, and score. And to start this game, that's just exactly what we've seen. They've gotten good defensive stops that have led to easy offensive opportunities in transition. 500 wins in her career, most of them coming right here at Maryland now in her 17th season, including the national championship, the banner that hangs here from 2006. And uh, Christy, talking to her today, and she did Tuesday night, and she did again this morning at, at shoot-around. She continues to just credit the fact that, hey, she hasn't made a basket. She's never gotten a defensive stop in any of those 500 wins. It's the players that are doing that, and they'll wave that one off. Shot clock violation, but 500, she's talked about, been, been nice, but it's been the connection she's made with all of her players and hearing from all of them that she's been most excited about. Yeah, she said it's all about the people. The people who she's been working with, the coaches, the players, the players' families, and the experience of that is something that she has tucked away in her heart for sure. Terps 3-1 and one in conference, Wolverines 2-2 two and two off an overtime victory against Northwestern on Tuesday when they badly needed Deja Church 
gives the Wolverines a one point lead. Deja Church, the sophomore, has really come along for Michigan. Last year had some clutch moments as Charles gets trapped in the corner and turns it over. Turnover's been a problem here in the opening quarter for Maryland. Nas Hillman, the Big Ten's leader in field goal percentage, high percentage shot there, and an early three-point lead here in the first. Uh, Hillman, the freshman, is a player who can play multiple positions defensively, but right there got a little too over-exuberant and foul, but right here, Charles gets trapped in the corner, and that's just where you don't want to go with the basketball in a trapping situation in a press. They're in a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one press. So keep the ball in the middle. That's a diamond. So in the middle of that diamond is where the ball needs to go, and then look opposite to clear a path for a transition opportunity. Averaging nearly 12 points a game, Nas Hillman off the bench leading Michigan at nearly seven rebounds a game. She had the clutch baskets against Northwestern in overtime on Tuesday night as yep. well. And Christy, that was after Kim barnes Rico told us, hey, listen, against Purdue, she had missed some big time plays. She's like, I'm going right back to her. Right, and that was a one point loss at the Purdue game. And then Northwestern, that overtime win by one point. So you do the little things, one possession matters. So if you can lock down and lock in to what the game plan has said to do and execute, you'll be in good shape. But what a fun freshman to watch. She's shooting 70% from the floor. Haley Thoam, body to the floor. Stephanie Jones right to the bucket, and she's got two more. On the defensive end, all the way to offense for the junior. Yeah, I love to see that. She has really improved from her freshman year. You know, she had a torn ACL her senior season in high school, the same as her sister, Brianna Jones, who graduated from Maryland a couple of years ago. But right here, here comes Stephanie Jones. A little bit of contact, no call here. No one gained any kind of advantage, but both players are on the ground. And Allie Thome was a little disappointed there was no call on the other end. Right. Now Stephanie Jones got the ball. Looking for a high ball screen from Thome. And again, contact under the bucket, no foul called. Physical play here in the opening quarter. And Taylor Mike Sell on the other end. Second leading scorer for Maryland's got their first bucket. Well, how about the pass by Shanice Lewis, the sophomore. A four to one assist to her ratio, and she is just efficient off the bench this season for Maryland. A nice ball movement here by Maryland. A good closeout by Nicole Munger as well. And Watson throws it into the backcourt. Oh, the Michigan bench is fired up. Kim barnes Rico high fives down the line on the Michigan sideline as she's clapping up the defensive effort from her Wolverines. Now, Maryland has several turnovers right now to start the game, eight. So those are empty possessions on the offensive end. Kim barnes Rico said this morning, hey, we have to take care of the basketball and we want to turn Maryland over. So they've done that so far. But if I would have told you, Christy, before this game tipped off, that the Terps would have eight turnovers in the opening quarter and they'd only be down one, I think Brenda Fries would take that. Right, and they've played some good defense and that's what saved them. Michigan's missed some easy shots as well. Kayla Robbins, nice move to the bucket and the Wolverines back up by three. Oh, what a nice up and under textbook in terms of footwork and finish. Charles, again a lot of contact. Letting them play here this afternoon with the snowstorm coming into College Park. <laughs> See what we get with that. You know, one of us has a longer journey after than the other. <laughs> Hillman over her left shoulder. Thome rips away the rebound and Hallie Thome to the bucket. She's got eight here in the opening quarter. Thome shoots 59% from the floor and a lot of her buckets come right there, right in front of the rim, up and over on offensive rebounds. And another turnover, that's number nine. Dilk pushes. Robbins, easy two in the largest lead of the game. Michigan is off to the races because of the defensive stops they've been able to manufacture. 1-2-2, two, two. they're sitting in that press and trying to trap in the corner, got another one. Wolverines cannot hold for the final shot, but they can milk most of the rest of this first quarter. One that saw Maryland jump out to an 8-2 advantage, and since then the Wolverines have gone on a 19-6 run. 
Well, they've gotten a lot of their points off of turnovers and off of that trap in the corner. Munger, deep three, off the rim. It rolls around and six to shoot for the Terps. Charles on the push. Two to shoot, Charles the three. No! And that's how the first quarter comes to an end. An impressive finish for Kim barnes Rico and her defense for the offense. Defense coming up huge for Michigan. They're in the passing lanes, being disruptive, and it's paying dividends on the offensive end in transition. Well, a really important game for Michigan here as the Wolverines on the road have a 21-14 start of the second quarter lead. Jason Norwood, Christy Winter Scott, happy to have you with us in College Park. This game, Christy, began, though, with a celebration of Coach Brenda Freeze. 500 career wins in, in, frankly, a relatively short period of time. Yeah, only 17 years here at the helm at Maryland, and what an exciting career she has had. A national championship in 2006, three Final Fours, and memories to last a lifetime. She said the most important thing for her has been the people, the players, the coaches, the families of the players over the years, and the silly string was in full effect yeah. on win 500 for Brenda Freeze. Which was still in her hair when she met the media <laughs> on Tuesday against Nebraska. The 81-63 win. And, you know, Christy, coming back into this game, you know, Maryland is coming off its best shooting performance of the season, certainly of the Big Ten season. 10 of 17 from three. They're not shooting poorly. They're 7 of 12, but they've got 10 first quarter turnovers. Yeah, you can't even test the waters if you don't have the basketball as Blair Watson misses on that three. But 10 turnovers early for Maryland and points off of turnovers, 10 points for Michigan. So that's the difference in this game. Kenray Johnson into the game for the first time for Michigan. Inside of 10 on the shot clock, Allie Thome had eight to lead the Wolverines, didn't get the rim. Johnson did, the shot clock resets, and a fight and a jump ball, and it stays with the Wolverines, and Brenda Freeze immediately going to the bench. Sarah Vujicic checking in. And Haley Brown going to the bench for the Wolverines as well. Yeah, I think she may have gotten poked in the eyes. She's holding that left eye and maybe her contact is out. Off the inbounds, it rolls out. It's tapped around and it stays with Michigan. You know, Maryland looks a little rattled here. That doesn't happen very often. It is a very young team, one senior on the roster. Well, they just have to be poised and composed when it comes to taking care of the ball. As Shanice Lewis ties it up there for the jump and the possession for Maryland. We talked to Shanice Lewis earlier today. She is a very poised, oh, yeah. composed a young player for the Terps, a sophomore out of Miami. The horn set there with the post go double screen away, and then Mike Sell looking for a ball screen and almost loses the handle. She had three turnovers in the opening quarter. Long cross-court pass. Vujicic to the bucket. Throws it up and in. No, wave it off. An offensive foul called on Vujicic. Well, a circus shot. But the charging call taken by Ali Thom. Now watch Vujicic right here taking the drive, but it was the second line of defense. Thom who was there outside of the restricted area to the chagrin of the fans here at the Xfinity Center. But Vujicic again the steal, chases it down, and this time she's fouled. Now Brenda Freeze here early in the second quarter, going to the junior from Slovenia, the transfer from Walter State Community College, and, and she has provided a spark that Maryland frankly needed. Well, she has provided a spark, and her team at Walter State went to the Elite Eight of the National Junior College Tournament, so she has winning experience. And her brother, Sasha yeah. Vujicic, played 11 seasons in the NBA. And also winning experience. Was yes. on the bench for those two years with the Lakers. Kobe Bryant and Paul Gasol won the NBA title in 09 and 10, so that experience there too, and she knocks them both in. Yeah, Kobe Bean Bryant. So <laughs> also that was fun stuff watching them win. 
We'll see what Maryland does defensively and trying to do the same kinds of things that Michigan is doing to them in terms of trying to speed them up. Great backdoor. Johnson, no. Now the Wolverines have missed four or five right at the rim. But the opportunities are there. I know Kim Barnes Enrico wants to see the ball go through the net, but she sees where she can get the opportunities, and they're going to keep going there until there have been some adjustments made defensively for Maryland. Those backdoor cuts with no help. The help was out the backside. So that'll be there if they continue to execute and set good screens. Church looking for Hillman, the lob, and way too tall. Well, there's an adjustment. That backside was up the line, waiting for any kind of lob action. Charles, the three. That's big. Kyla Charles gets the Terps with a two. Kyla Charles has not struck that many threes this season. And that's something that she has really worked on in terms of developing to her skill set. That's her first made three of the year. Thome again. And right to her strong hand on that left side. Now we talked about at the beginning of this game that Hallie Thome, once Big Ten play started, got back to the Hallie Thome that is the third time all leading scorer at Michigan, and she has shown that here in the first half. Well, she's shown herself to the basketball. She's made herself available to get easy opportunities. Well, Stephanie Jones misses there on the reverse. Wolverines again on the push. Church, the spin, and the lay-in. Deja Church. Ooh, that's a spin cycle for you right there. Church strong with that move, sitting nice and low with the contact. Lewis rattles in a three. Well, if you're Brenda Freeze, you're not happy with the turnovers. You're not necessarily happy with the rebounds you're giving up, but you're getting three-pointers from players who aren't normally giving you the three-pointers. Right, but they have to get what they can get offensively in terms of keeping the possession safe. So, okay, it's not exactly what you want, but it's something rather than a turnover and going the other way for a bucket for Michigan. Church had to double clutch. Nice defense from Lewis and a good box out from Jones. A terrific box out inside by Stephanie Jones. And that's the one person you can't leave open. The Big Ten's leader in three-point makes immediately. Gets a timeout taken by the Wolverines. Oh, it's a run here for Maryland to get even. Taylor Mike Sell sits in the gym. The gym rat. The work ethic paying dividends right now for Maryland. Maryland on an 11-4 run. Taylor Mike Sell hit the last three. The freshman from Ohio is leading the Big Ten and made threes. And Christy, she's the one player maybe in the conference you can't leave open. Well, she won the high school three-point shooting contest. And look at her work. This is her shooting regimen on non-game days. 1,000 shots made, not taken, made. Look at those numbers, and then on game days, she reduces it down to only 500 made. <laughs> on game days, 253s, a couple free throws, but look at the range. She's going to pull up right there at three and knock in buckets pregame. The first player out, the first player to leave. Now, if Maryland has a 10.30 a.m. practice, she's in the gym at 8 o'clock getting those shots up and in. And she's just that workhorse. Brenda Free says, hey, I've had to tell her on an off day, you've got to take the day off and get the physical recovery. And she she does. She's getting used to it. Brenda said she's agreeing to it a little bit more, but it's really hard to tear her away from the gym. You know, we were talking with assistant coach Karen Blair earlier today about what impressed them most. And yes, they talked about Mike Sell's work ethic as Marilyn mm -hmm. turns it over for the 12th time. But it was this summer when she got here on campus and she was doing a drill that they hadn't seen before. It's the under pressure drill right. where you have to start over if you miss back to back. Now, what's normally good, go 53s without missing back to back. Right. She went 257 yep. without missing back to back shots. 257 shots. And Brenda Free said that her staff came back with their mouths on the ground telling them, wow, we have never seen a shooter like this. And Brenda Freeze was talking about Christy Tolliver being an elite yep. scorer, and she still is in the WNBA with the Washington Mystics. But she has never seen quite a shooter, and she's just a sponge when it comes to learning the game as well. She does film work with Brenda Freeze once a week and sits down and learns the game at this level. What was on the line right on cue, just a two. But back-to-back -back makes now for Mike Zell, and Michigan finds itself down two. 
and the miss from Church. So all of a sudden, Christy, the momentum, which was in Michigan's favor, all the Maryland turnovers, Terps have turned it around here on a 13-4 run. Yeah, Mike Sell, she also got her high school jersey retired just a couple of weeks ago. So she is getting things done and being respected for her game. And LeBron James came to see her play in high school as well. Thome fouled by Shakira Austin. Hallie Thome already working towards a double-double here this afternoon. Thome, 10 points, now six rebounds here in the first half. Well, right now, Michigan is winning the paint point game, and that's something you really don't say a lot when you're facing a Maryland team who loves to pound the ball inside. And they've done a tremendous job this season with over 47% of their offense coming from the interior. So for Michigan to outdo them so far in this game, in the paint, that's pretty impressive. Michigan's running a flex action here, trying to get even more points in the paint. Munger around the screen. Inside four minutes to play here in the opening half. Thome with five on the shot clock. Blocked by Austin. And the save from Charles. The hustle continuing to pay off for the Terps. Mike selling a triple team. Charles underneath. Too strong. Wow, Shakira Austin had three players surrounding her and nowhere to go and found Charles. He couldn't come up with the bucket, but... A lot of attention for the young freshman from Maryland. Another one of those freshmen we talked about from the outset, Amy Dilk now trying to settle it down from Carmel, Indiana. Boom, long two. And a whistle and a foul. It's away from the ball. It's on Michigan. It's on Nas Hillman, and that's her second. Yeah, Nas Hillman had a little displacement down there on Charles. They both got tangled up under the basket. And Hillman will have to come out with their second foul there. Maryland looking to clear Taylor Mikesell up top, trying to get some ball screen action for Vujicic. All of this started to turn for the Terps when Vujicic enter the game. Johnson on the push. No foul. She gets the two, and we're even again. Well, you can't telegraph your passes. I mean, Michigan has been great at anticipating passes this afternoon. You've got a ball fake. They've been strong in the passing lane, strong on the ball with deflections as well. Maryland averages 16 turnovers a game. The Terps have 13 here in the first half. And that's going to be something that's going to be discussed in halftime. Sarah Vujicic knocks in the three. And over a 45% shooter from three this season. Vujicic joining the three-point shooting game. It just you, you just can't throw a pass like that without ball faking first and making the defense react. And then there's Vujicic pulling from range, all net from the corner. Homer the trip to the free throw line, the first foul on Shakira Austin, who's going to go to the bench. Well, just a year removed from Caitlin Flaherty. Finishing her career at Michigan as the all-time leading scorer. Allie Thome is quickly approaching 2,000 career points for, for her career. Now you're talking about the best to ever do it, men or women at Michigan, in terms of scoring the basketball, Caitlin Flaherty. And I asked Kim Burns Rico how it's changed for her in terms of her offensive philosophy, and she said this is the most balance she's ever had on her roster. Stephanie Jones inside, Maryland back in front. They've done it as a collective unit. It was the inside-outside personality last year with Thom and Flaherty and now it's widespread. Back to Thom, ripped away. Two on one. Mike Sell spotted. Whoa! A Kenray Johnson back on defense. Now, I don't know if Johnson played volleyball, but that was certainly something to see. I mean, that went into the fifth row along the baseline. Sue 
super impressive in terms of timing and anticipation. Might be stuck in a tuba. Dilk <laughs> <laughs> left open. That's a triple. We're tied again at 32. As we were talking about, these freshmen are so ready to compete at the next level. And I mean, Brenda Freeze was saying there are just so many to choose from. Who do you say is the best? And you can't you can't leave anybody off the list. And Vujicic with the answer. She averages two and a half a game. She's got eight off the bench for the Terps. She's got that early lift on her shot. It makes it so pretty. Robbins lost it, gets it back, can't finish. And, and, and when Kim barnes Rico gets this team in the locker room in 45 seconds, that's got to be the conversation. Yep. We've caused so many turnovers, and we're just not finishing at the basket. Layups, you got to put them in. It makes the difference at the end of the game, and that's the stat you circle. Dill gets it to go, count it. That one's good, and a chance for a three-point play. Well, how impressive is Amy Dilk? The freshman, she knows she's probably going to get some contact here, but has the wherewithal and the strength and the proper competitive mindset to get that shot in. Draws the second foul on Shanice Lewis. Amy Dilk, Indiana Miss Basketball, Gatorade Player of the Year. She and Nas Hillman, part of this freshman class, along with Ariel Young, who we haven't seen yet today, but someone, again, out of Tallahassee that Kim barnes is looking forward to her development here in Ann Arbor. Oh, no doubt. And Amy Dilk, four assists a game for the freshmen to go along with her individual scoring prowess. Three-second difference. Shot clock, game clock. Mike Sell with a hot hand. It's Vujicic off the mark, offensive board. One more. Mike Sell for three. Batted around. Everybody's on the floor. And there's the horn. There is a player down right underneath the basket for Michigan. That looks like Kayla Robbins. And the staff helps her to her feet, and they'll head to the locker room. Highly competitive, back and forth. Michigan led by seven, Maryland led by five, and it's Maryland up by one, heading to the half. When we return, it's our Chicago studios, Michelle McMahon, Bobby Kelsey. It's the halftime report on the other side. Ninth ranked team up by one. Women's basketball on BTN is brought to you by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Talk to a State Farm agent today. One point lead as we get set for the start of the second half. Maryland 35, Michigan 34. What Michigan is getting accustomed to, one point games. They're coming off back to back. Jason Horowitz, Maryland Hall of Famer, Christy Winter Scott, happy to have you with us here in College Park. Highly entertaining, back and forth. A lot of turnovers for the Terps. Yes. A lot of missed shots for the Wolverines. Yes, Maryland had 13 first half turnovers that turned into 12 points for Michigan, and they're going to count on that same kind of dogged effort on the defensive end, especially in their 1-2-2 press where they were trapping and getting easy opportunities. Now, you said count on. Something you don't count on coming into this game is the contribution from Sarah Vujicic off the bench. Well, Sarah Vujicic in the first half was lights out from three, extending the defense for Michigan and getting into the basket when they closed out hard, getting the A1 opportunities. I just think she was the X factor. She changed the tide when she came into the game. Points off turnovers, certainly big in that half. Again, the missed shots in the backcourt for the Wolverines, 5 of 19 in the first half. But Vujicic, in the four Big Ten games for Maryland coming into the day, had played one minute. Mm. She played one minute against Nebraska on Tuesday in the 18-point victory. But... You know, they had to go. Brenda Fries needed a spark. They were down by seven after the first quarter, and she provided it. Well, that's why you stay ready so you don't have to get ready when your number's called. You have to stay mentally locked in, see how the game is flowing, see how you can impact the game when you get in. So you're always learning. You see the little pieces of the game where you can come in and say, hey, I think I can take a shot on that swing when it's my turn to get in. And she took full advantage of that and really impacted the flow and rhythm of the game for Maryland. And that's what we talked to Shanice Lewis about earlier today. The sophomore, uh, as you get the foul called on Deja Church, her first. The sophomore who has basically been a starter her entire first year and a half here at Maryland. 
now coming off the bench for the last five games, he's like, yeah, it's, it was a little bit of an adjustment, but, you know, I want to win. I know I'm going to be ready, and my game's still the same. Yeah, she said she thinks she came off the bench maybe one time in high school, and I asked her if it was senior night when she was a junior. I, you know, she just didn't come off the floor in high school, but it is an adjustment in terms of your ego, but when you're talking about team play, you have to put the team first and come in and make your mark on the game when you get the opportunity. And Austin has been the one who has gone into the starting lineup for Shanice Lewis, but off the bench again, her points, she's not a huge scorer here at Maryland, but assists in Big Ten play, she's, we're talking about four to one assist to turnover ratio. Right, well you have to understand, especially the young players who are watching this game, it's not all about getting a bucket. It's all about setting your team up. How much better do you make your teammates when you enter the game? Do you rebound? Do you call screens? Do you help? Do you assist? Do you create offense? It's not always about getting a bucket. It's about creating buckets for your team and subsequently winning. Austin missed both free throws. She gets it right back from Charles. And you know, something that'll be interesting here in the early going here of this third quarter. Michigan doesn't shoot a lot of threes. Caitlin Flaherty now done 2,700 career points. It's a different offense, but certainly still effective. Kyla Charles on the curl, and now it's starting to be efficient. Yes, that was a nice decision there, even though she did have Jones right there for the dime on that weak side. But when you make a shot like that, that's okay. Church trapped in the paint, nowhere to go. Showed the patience, and Brown tracks down the rebound. I think Jones missed her assignment there. And she was shaking her head in disappointment. Like, it happens quickly, so it's easier said than done. Hey, put a body on somebody. It happens quickly. If you don't have position, you lose the opportunity to corral the rebound. Shakira Austin now with seven rebounds. The freshman leading the Terps at 11 a game. A weak side post screen on the ball for Charles. Trying to get a two-man game with Austin. Eighth rebound for Austin, but she put it on the floor and she's fouled. Well, we know one thing for sure, that Shakira Austin's defensive game and rebounding game is a little bit ahead of her offensive prowess and skill set, but the ceiling is so high for her in terms of what she will have the ability to do as her career evolves. Great look to Charles. She got bodied underneath, still able to get it to go. And now Kyla Charles has nine. Well, that was such a strong move there by Charles to take that hit and finish it. Thought to the left hand. Karen in the foul. That looked like that was on Stephanie Jones there. Let's go back to the previous play, though. Great dime. Our State Farm assist to the game to Kyla Charles. Right there, Blair Watson finds Charles underneath. He took a little bit of a hip bump. Nice find on that weak side. And usually your head is not on a swivel when plays like that happen. You have to be aware of who's behind you so you can get a hand up for deflection. 10th lead change of the ball game. Michigan back in front by one. Looking to ISO Austin inside. Jones lost the handle as we dip inside seven minutes here in the third quarter. We're running a horn set here with the two posts up at the three-point line. Watson tips it around. That foul's going on the Terps. Yeah, Blair Watson back after tearing her ACL almost a year to the day. And it was so impactful for Maryland when she was injured last year because she was one of their top defenders last season. She could play multiple positions defensively. But she was another hybrid player that they could bring in offensively as well to hit shots from the outside and extend the defense of their opponents. She was averaging 13 points a game last year when she tore her ACL on January 10th. And uh, offense not quite to the same level yet this year. Still a great three-point shooter. Thome to the bucket. No. Great rebound by Dilk, and that's blocked. Third time for Brown, and she's fouled. Well, the persistence on the glass by Michigan. 
has really been something to see. And there's the drive by Thome off the mark, but Michigan right there in between three Maryland bodies. And then the foul there by Charles on their third attempt. You were talking about the injury to Blair Watson. Haley Brown last year, too, season-ending leg injury yeah. at the end of February, and she was playing very well as a starter in her freshman year. 27 games started last year, nine points a game. And you know, talking with the staff earlier today, they were worried that she was forcing it a little bit to start this season, but now starting to round into form once Big Ten play got going. Yeah, she has good experience. She played on that U19 team from Canada. And, you know, she's been in double figures now, three of the four games in Big Ten conference play, so she's really gaining rhythm and continuity to her game. Charles off the curl. Munger corrals the board. Seven points today for Haley Brown. Up to Halley. Foam for the two, and Michigan up by four. Tempo right there. We've seen more of that from Michigan than from Maryland so far this afternoon, but they're getting the stops necessary to play at that pace. Loader for Mike Sell, speaking of pace. Now Mike Sell's not just a three-point threat. She has that soft floater as well. She's only a freshman is going to continue to put more things into her bag. Thunder to the floor. Effort for the Wolverines. Two Terps are down. Back to Thome and the foul. <laughs> Stephanie Jones got her on the arm. Hallie Thome can't be stopped this afternoon. You see Kyla Charles communicating with her teammates saying hey we have to be better defensively that backside rotation by jones a beat and a half too late she had to be established and that's a tough angle to come from the top of the key down to try to challenge someone on that ball side block now hallie thome last year had 12 20 point games she dealt with back spasms in the non-conference has picked it up pretty heavily here in the first now five Big Ten games. And already 21 of Michigan's 47 points here on the road. And, and the bigger part to this, Christy, Michigan's a team that's got a couple of wins against top 25 opponents. Minnesota, Missouri not ranked at the moment, but they're cusping being in the top 25. Right. But this is a stretch of five of six where they're playing five ranked teams. And if they want to get back to the NCAA tournament, where they found themselves last year. They need to win some of these, and this one would be huge. Yeah. And Kim burns Rico as there's foul called on fast break again on Maryland. But Kim burns Rico told us today at practice that, hey, we're not looking at all those games at once. We're looking at one game at a time. And in this one, they're playing well. Up by four on the road. It's third all-time leading scorer, Hallie Thobe, trying to get to 2,000 today which would take a lot, but Christy Winterscott, she's got 21 here, middle part of the third quarter. Well, she has 21 because she's making herself available to the basketball, creating space, getting lobs, and finishing when the rotation is laid on the backside by Maryland's defense, and she is a senior. She has a purpose behind what she's doing. She is leading the team with her energy, her effort, and her focus, and her stats show it. 55% from the floor. Just under eight boards a game, and she's doing her work early. You know what she's going to do. You know her sweet spot is that left block, and she's continuing to get it. And she's been part of what has been a, basically a program-changing group here at Michigan, right? Caitlin Flaherty, who finished her career last year. Allie Thome, who came into this game at 1,886 points. So, joking about the 2,000, 114 <laughs> might set a record. <laughs> But 21, I mean, she's over 1,900 now for her career. She's going to get to 2,000 barring an injury. She'll finish her career second all-time in Michigan history and score. Yeah, it's just been fun to watch her game evolve from her freshman year to now and how much confidence she exudes and what a leader she's become as well. Wolverine's largest lead was seven. It's sitting at five now with 440 to go in the third. And Thome pulls down another rebound. That's her eighth. They left Dilk alone. She's struggling with her shot today. Amy Dilk, 2 of 10 from the floor. Well, it's just like she shot that one too quickly. You know, sometimes you need that defender in your face to get your rhythm a little bit better. But I think she shot that one thinking somebody was on their way. Lewis. There's Shakira Austin once again on the floor, the 6'5 freshman. And out of the craziness, great ball movement. Mike Sell knocks in a clutch three. It won't be the last time you say that in her four-year career here at Maryland. She is just impressive in terms of her stroke. Church block right to Hillman. 
Sometimes it's right time, right place. Break a play to make a play. Just be in the right place, like you said, and finish when you're there. Brianna Frazier hasn't had a ton of time off the bench for the Terps today. Just five minutes for the lone senior on this roster for Brooklyn, New York. Well, she can get going offensively for Maryland. And you saw right there, her purpose is to take Dolm off the bounce. She just didn't finish the play. Dill penetrates, lays it up and in. And that's a better looking shot. You know, when you're struggling, Chris, you, where do you go? Go to the basket. Take it to the rim and finish it. Nice hesitation and finish by Dilk on that last possession for Michigan. Lewis, great dish to Austin. Muscles it up and in, and she's fouled. Amy Dilk. On one side, and on this side, Shakira Austin takes the hit, a little double clutch on the finish. And Dilk right here is gonna find herself a little crease and crevice, with that little hesitation giving her the space that she needed to finish. Austin double digit rebounds again, averages 11. Struggling at the free throw line. Allie Thome now one rebound shy of a double-double. We knew coming into this game, it would be tough to get boards. Top two rebounding teams in the Big Ten. Two of the top ten rebounding teams in the country. Michigan plus three on the glass so far in the ballgame. It's been a battle on the glass. Both of these teams knew that coming in, though. Hillman gets the offensive board, didn't hit rim, and Austin's got her 11th rebound. The constant motor, Ken Barnes, Rico said that Nas Hillman possesses, especially on the glass. You saw how many times she jumped for that one rebound. Didn't get it, but the attention to the basketball, she was right there fighting for it. Frazier, double team, fights through it, left it short. Inside of two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Wolverines up by four in a building they have never won. 0-3 in their three trips here to Maryland. Dilk off the dribble. Lewis wants to push. Up ahead, finds Austin, lays it up. And a three-point opportunity again. Great vision by Lewis to find Austin cutting to the basket. What can you do? to make your teammates look good, feed them the ball where they can finish strong with contact. Shanice Lewis with the perfect pass to freshman Shakira Austin showing some emotion on the finish. And a BTN standout presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Austin who had missed her first three free throws hits that. Christy, Shanice Lewis off the bench has eight assists here tonight. Well, that's fantastic. I know you ask her, how many do you want to get? And she said, if I get five, I know I'm rolling. And eight is where she stands with a lot of time still to play. Extra pass to a wide open Robbins off the heel. And a chance for Maryland to go back in front. Watson for three. Well, Brenda Free said that these two teams are so even in terms of their personnel and what they like to do. And she said that we have to separate ourselves with execution. And whether that be offensive execution or defensive execution, it covers both sides. Right, and Maryland had 13 turnovers in the first half. Shanice Lewis and company zero in the third quarter. Well, it makes a difference when you hone in on what you need to do and the execution piece shines through. Mike Sell again with the floater. Taylor Mike Sell, 14. <laughs> Straight games and double figures, and the Terps in front by three. Such a tough shot to defend. Such a high release on the floater. Can't block it, can't disrupt it. Wolverines can almost hold for the last shot. Up top, Robbins thought about it. Four on the shot clock. In the corner, Johnson didn't hit anything. And that's a shot clock violation. 
The strong defensive possession there for Maryland. To be able to get that stop, they were there to contest the shot from the top. And on the pass to the corner, they were there to contest that one as well. Arriving on the catch makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to defend. Can't wait until players catch it and then say, oh, by the way, I guess I need to get out there. And that's too late. The shot's up and in. And they push Denise Lewis on the bench here for these final two and a half to get maybe Sarah Vujicic a look. Baseball pass. Watson taps it, corrals it. It's good if it goes. And it's off the mark. A 7-0 run to end the third. Maryland had a one-point lead at the half. And Austin's given Maryland a one-point lead to the third. Shakira Austin and Maryland with the momentum. For the first time in Michigan program history, they have played back-to-back one-point games. So we could go at Purdue. Dominique Godin what turned out to be the game-winning bucket. They had a chance but came up short. But Christy Winter Scott, Kim Barnes and Rico so proud of how they bounced back at home again in a one-point game on Tuesday, beating Northwestern in overtime. Yeah, that overtime game was a character builder for Michigan. They lost at Nebraska, won at Minnesota, lost at Purdue by one point, and then won that one-point game at Northwestern their last time out. And Kim Barnes and Rico said, hey, this is a competitive conference any given night. It can be anyone's game, regardless of ranking or where the game is played. But it's been really fun to see how this team has changed in terms of philosophy with the absence of Caitlin Flaherty due to graduation. But Michigan has been fighting this season, especially so far in conference play. And this is the sixth ranked team they faced this year. Two and three against ranked opponents so far this season. Wolverines coming off a trip to the NCAA tournament last year. Their first since the opening part of the career for Kim Barnes and Rico in Ann Arbor. Lewis off the glass. Brenda Freeze wanted a foul. I thought Lewis turned the corner and may have drawn some contact there. Munger also thought she drew contact. Mike Sell, left hand. Watson for two. What a laser beam pass there by Mike Sell underneath to Watson for the finish. Great find. Munger really struggling from the floor. That's a big shot. Nicole Munger was one of seven before getting that one to fall. Well, Kim Burns Rico said that Nicole Munger said to her over the summer after she had a chance to see the freshmen coming in and all the young players, why not us this year? Why can't it be our turn? to make some noise and win a Big Ten championship this season. She says she wants to be playing her best basketball for the Big Ten tournament. Count on the foul. Austin found Jones underneath. And now she's in double figures with 10. And right here, Maryland, you can see what they're trying to do, get into the paint, drawing a double team as Austin. And then there's Jones on that weak side, cleaning up things on the end one opportunity. First the three-point play. Back to a two-possession lead for the Terps. Eight and a half to play the ball game. One-two-two look here defensively for Maryland, trying to slow things for Michigan. Back to Thome. A soft touch jumper. 23 for Hallie Thome. And she was on that right side that time. Still shot it with her left hand, but she was still able to body up and get deep enough into the paint to take an easy shot. I mean, if something works, why go away hey, from it, right? Take that shot. Lewis! You could tell that's what Lewis wanted to do on the previous possession. And didn't get in there for the finish, so she knew she could attack that spot again and win. Church, Michigan beat the pressure, and Deja Church found an open spot on the elbow. Well, that's the danger when you're pressing your rotation back. All of a sudden, it becomes transition. You have to match up quickly to be able to contest and disrupt defensively. Into the corner. Watson lines up a triple. maker for Maryland has been Blair Watson. When they've needed a shot, she's come up big for them. But the creative plays for Shanice Lewis, and again, she set up the triple. Set up the triple, 
A nice bounce pass to the corner. Watson rises and fires, and the bench sees it and gives the triple signal. I love Frazier's look on her face. Like, that's just easy work for her. You know, usually when you think of sparks off the bench, it comes in the form of offense in terms of points. Right. Shanice Lewis is doing it with assists. This will dunk right there in front of the basket. That ball just went down and popped right out. Mike Sell in transition for three. Biggest lead of the ball game. The Terps up by eight. Time out, Michigan. The best shooter in the Big Ten from range puts the Terps up by eight. Taylor Mike Sell ripping nets. Teammates loving it. Tomorrow on BTN, more great women's basketball action comes your way. Rutgers, the only unbeaten team in conference, battles Nebraska, followed by Purdue and Northwestern. Big Ten women's basketball tomorrow right here on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Here in College Park, Maryland has hit its last five shots to open up its largest lead of the ball game by eight. Well, they've gained confidence because they're... Being more patient on the offensive end, and they have great spacing. Blair Watson nails a three. Good skip pass. Finding Mike Sell for the triple. So I just think they've had a little bit more patience. You know, we saw early on they were rushing things, turning the ball over, a couple careless errors. But now you've seen all that wiped away. Yeah. And they've just been more consistent with their rhythm because of good spacing. And coming off a 51% shooting performance at Nebraska, the Terps are shooting 50% here today, and 8 of 18 from beyond the arc, just under 50%. Some zone for Maryland here. Good backdoor cut, Thorn found Church, no foul, and a chance to push the lead to double digits. And Austin underneath. But good patience once again. See, they're going to set up one of their sets and try to get the best look for their team. Jones kicks it out. Mike Sell rattles it out, but a second opportunity for Kyla Charles. And it's kind of been a quiet game. Charles just nine points. Yeah, but it speaks to the balance as Watson traveled there on that one, but it speaks to the balance. Both of these teams are so similar in terms of their personality, in terms of what they like to do on the floor. They start two freshmen at times, so we were talking about their prowess on the glass. Both teams pretty much even there as well. Thome has 23. Munger. Thome lost it. On the break. Charles through the defenders. There's Kyla Charles pushing tempo for Maryland like she does. The steal and score mentality is what Maryland wants to do. And Austin gets back for the block. Numbers for the Terps and momentum. Austin. And Austin is down behind the play. Now gets back to her feet. Munger trailing in transition. The long three and it's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Michigan. Uh, this is a critical time here for the Wolverines, Christy. They've had the lead for a good portion of this game, but it's starting to get away. Well, they have to be a little bit more deliberate in terms of what they want done on the offensive side in terms of execution. Maryland switched up their defense a little bit, went a little zone, trying to keep Michigan off balance and rhythm. Dill, great move to get into the paint, but again, that's why Shakira Austin got put into the starting lineup five games ago. She is a rim protector. And we got a timeout on the floor. 4.55 to go in College Park. Maryland up by 10. Now Maryland has pushed it here in the fourth quarter, leading Michigan by 10. We ain't talking about the great freshmen for both of these teams. And Christy, as you look as the top freshman around the Big Ten, three of them are on the floor right now. Oh, it's just so much fun to see these players come in with a competitive maturity as only freshmen across the Big Ten. You see Nas Hillman, who was present today for Michigan, and then Mike Sell in Austin. And Nia Cloudin, wow, what a fine example she is of someone who is just confident on the floor. And Dorka Juhas, she has just been amazing in terms of 
Her seamless transition from Hungary to Ohio State. 6'4", hybrid, can knock down threes, put the ball on the floor and finish. It's just been really exciting to see. And Imani Lewis, also from Wisconsin, could go on that list as well. There's so many freshmen, yeah. it's hard to pick just five. And a lot of that was scoring, but Shakira Austin's been doing it with rebounding. And here tonight, seven block shots against the Wolverines. Oh, it's fun to block a shot. I'm going to tell you what, that's <laughs> better than putting a shot in someone's face and telling him, you are denied. You are not able to come in here and do whatever you want to do. I'm dictating on defense and closing down the paint and protecting the rim. That's fun stuff. She's a point away from her sixth double-double of the season. She's three blocks away from a triple-double. Oh, that would be fun. She could mess around, get that triple-double. Thome working on Austin. Got a piece of it, but Thome fought it up. That's an important possession for Michigan. Had to get a bucket. Yeah, they needed something. They had been on an offensive drought and give credit to Maryland's defense. And Shakir Austin inside for denying any opportunities to get back into the game. Season high tying Hallie Thome with 25 points. And a foul called on Thome. So that'll send Maryland to the free throw line. She has been so dominant on the offensive end. Michigan hasn't really been able to get to her because of Shakira Austin here in the fourth quarter. All right, I just love that decision by Austin to rip and go from the high post. This stroke on the free throw tonight on BTN. Rivals collide on the ice in Columbus. Michigan takes on fourth-ranked Ohio State. Don't miss Big Ten Hockey tonight at 7 Eastern right here on BTN on the Fox Sports app. So after missing her first three free throws, Shakira Austin has now hit three in a row. And her sixth double-double of the season, 11 points, 14 rebounds to go with those seven blocks. An amazing line for the freshman for Maryland on the interior. I mean, she's got such a bright future ahead of her. Locked out with the bounce out to Munger. Corrals floats and rattles it home. Michigan trying to dig in and get some offense going here. One, two, two. They're trying with that again after made shots. Jones had it poked away. Church to the floor. And another takeaway here for Michigan. I love the hustle. And a foul called Shakira Austin from behind. Brenda Freeze not happy with that call. A drive attempt there by Stephanie Jones. People on the ground for that 50-50 basketball. Who wants it more? And then right there, Austin swiped down at it. You have to hit up at the ball to take any questions away from the officials on contact. Hillman quickly back out to Church. They force it to Thome. Barrels of Austin and an offensive foul. You can tell Michigan is trying its best to force the ball to its best player and just out of control. Yeah, they tried to go inside to Thome and Austin was standing right there. We'll take a look at it. Austin jumps to baseline side, which you're supposed to do. Right there. And she's established. Her heel was up on her left foot, right on the arc of the restricted area. So she was in the restricted area on that. But she established herself. When that pass came into Thome, she jumped to baseline side because she knew she was on that left block. Yep. And that's Thome's sweet spot. You know, really, the difference maker here in this ballgame is Shakira Austin. Oh, for sure. Her size inside has given Michigan problems at the rim. And again, Michigan has had some open looks at the rim, too, and missed some layups in this ballgame. Right, but, you know, the shots that she hasn't blocked, she's disrupted. She's changed the shot opportunities and the shot choices from Michigan on the interior. She stands 6'5". She's long-armed, long limbs, and lanky and has great anticipation skills on her defense. Horn set again for Maryland. Lewis backs it out to Austin, the double comes. Off the deflection, six on the shot clock for Shanice Lewis. Austin 
Takes Dom to the bucket, forces it in. Pressure time now for the Wolverines. Tremendous oh. footwork there by Austin, my goodness. Backdoor, Church, nice cut. Got behind the freshman Mike Sell for two. And again, head on a swivel on that backside. You have to be able to see cutters coming through so you can deny cuts and not have anyone cross your face. Watson steps back early in the shot clock. Buries the three. That was a cold-blooded look by Watson. Five Terps in double figures now with Watson having ten. Hundred seconds to play here for Maryland. Maryland, especially in the second half, much more smooth in terms of what they have wanted to execute on the offensive side. More deliberate. Took better care of the basketball. 13 first half turnovers. Two in the second half. And high percentage shots for the Terps have built a 13 point lead with 110 to go. And another assist for Shanice Lewis off the bench. Munger on the kick. Dilt to the triple. That's good. Timeout. Kim Barnes Rico gets the timeout with 59 seconds to play. Michigan with one timeout remaining. Maryland right now working on the interior, isolating Shakir Austin. The Sigma reverse pivot there and the drive and finish to the basket, gaining confidence on every single possession is the young freshman from Maryland. Now it's back to an 18-game conference schedule this year, and Rutgers, the only team in the Big Ten that hasn't dropped a conference game. Maryland's loss was to Rutgers right before New Year's. But, Chris, this Maryland program with Brenda Free since they joined the league in 14-15 really has been dominant. Uh, and just nine conference losses since they joined the league, and again, they're going to be towards the top. But the depth of the league is the difference. Oh, it's just been ridiculous in terms of the competitive nature of this conference. Night in, night out, everyone's beating one another. That's the beauty of the conference, and every night you've got to bring your A game for four quarters. You can't slack off or you'll get bitten. Well, and Thursday night, perfect example of that. You were at West Lafayette. Yes. Uh, you saw Iowa, yes. right? Top 20 team in the nation, fall by five to Purdue. Yeah, that's just the balance of this conference, and so many great players, ranked teams. Rutgers came here and beat Maryland. It's just night in, night out. you got to be on your best. Church forces it up. Charles the rebound. Michigan gives the foul, and with 41.9 to go, Maryland might just be icing another victory. Michigan Ninth-ranked team in the nation, trying to get to 15-1. and one. And Nas Hillman, a fantastic freshman for the Wolverines. Just not her best night here uh, on what has been a fantastic first year in Ann Arbor. Yeah, yeah, no question. And, you know, you're talking about a Michigan team who was in the beginning of the game, scrappy, turning Maryland over 13 times in the first half and scoring 12 points off of those, carrying a lead at halftime. I just think there's so much upside. And, and again, Kim barnes Rico said, hey, this is a process. We want to be playing our best basketball as the season progresses. It's not based on one game or, or not, wins or losses. Either way, we're not gauging where we are right now, winning or losing games. We want to get better. Have you gotten better? And I think she can check the box with yes in terms of effort. Just a couple of execution plays, finishing some layups would have made a difference. Dilk is fouled and an opportunity to get Michigan within 10 here with 29.4. But when you were talking about the process, it's going to come up huge for the Wolverines here in the next couple of weeks. When you look at the month of January for Kim Barnes or Rico, after today, they are at Iowa coming up. You've got Ohio State, a trip to Indiana as well, Michigan State, Iowa, all coming up here in the month of January, Christy. I, there's no break for this team here in the month of January. 
By the way, all of those games on BTN. <laughs> exactly, but I don't think they would want it any other way. And neither will Kim Barnes and Rico. She wants them to get into the fire, be baptized by fire, if you will. And I mean, only two seniors, two juniors, without a lot of experience for the two juniors, and then eight freshmen and sophomores. So you have a young team, and that's when you usually see the biggest jump. You see the biggest jump with young players who are coming in like sponges, continuing to learn every single possession, and getting work in every day, and, and gaining that confidence through consistent effort. And I think Kim Barnes and Rico knows what she has in that, and she's gonna continue to chisel away at it. Now we've talked a lot today for Maryland about Shakira Austin and her double-double and near triple-double when you consider the blocks. Right. Shanice Lewis off the bench, 11 assists. Mm. That's big time. sophomore from Miami. Big time. I want to hear kids, more kids talking about assists than buckets. Because that makes a difference. Make your teammates better. Be that kid. Now, if you're wondering, it's not quite her career high. She did have 12 assists against South Carolina. She was starting early in the season. She started that ball game when they beat the Gamecocks earlier this year. 11 assists off the bench. And, it, and, and, and I realize she's played starters minutes, 28 minutes when this game is all said and done. But that is a remarkable number. Yeah, you know, she played 34 minutes off the bench against Nebraska. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in at the beginning. Are you a starter? Or a finisher. Who are, I mean, it doesn't matter. Come in and make an impact. And that's what Shanice Lewis has been. Final shot from Deja Church. Off the mark. Last touch by Maryland with 3.3. This game a lot closer than the final score will show. Michigan was down by one at the end of the third. Had some leads in the ball game, but just too much of Maryland here in the fourth. And the ninth ranked team in the country gets win number 501 for Brenda Freeze. They beat Michigan 83-69. Yeah, a good, hard-fought contest by both teams. This is what Big Ten basketball was all about. Bring your A game, execute to your fullest ability, and get the job done, and that's what Maryland did today. Strong fight by Michigan, but they just ran out of it in the second half. I thought Maryland dialed up their defensive effort, and that changed the game. 15-1 for the Terps. We'll be back to wrap it up and talk with Coach Brenda Freeze on the other side here on BTN.